Hi everyone, and welcome to this game analysis, which is part of my coverage of the Way of Onitama tournament. This was also a round one uh, match, um, and I must say I, I checked every uh, match played in round one. Uh, in total it was over 30 of them. Uh, there are some good matches, of course, but this match, to me, it, uh, it stood above uh, all others. First of all, it was played by uh, two very good players. Uh, Zane Serzo, uh, here playing with the red, uh, is a top 15, top 20 player uh, in Board Game Arena at the moment. And uh, Knut the Great is uh, top 10, uh, maybe even top 5. Um, they're both very highly uh, rated players. And as you will see in this match, they both played uh, extremely accurately. Uh, the main reason why for me this match stood uh, above the others, it's because this match is truly a masterclass on how to hold on to a card done right. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I'm a strong uh, defendant that holding on to a card is usually uh, dangerous. And this is also a pitfall that I see many of the beginner and intermediate players uh, doing. They blindly hold on to a card because they think it is the best card. Um, and because of that, they narrow down their uh, options. Now, this does not mean that I think the best card should be given away blindly. Not at all. Um, but it means that I think you should not restrict your options just because you hold what you think is the best card. Well, of course, one good way to uh, hold on to the best card while uh, not uh, playing inferior moves is to try to use that best card to constantly put the opponent under pressure. And this is exactly what Zena Zerzo does so well uh, in this game and why I think this game is a, a remarkable uh, example that should be analyzed more carefully. So to start, and as you know, before I start uh, playing the games, I like to look at the cards and uh, do uh, a quick analysis. What do we see in the cards in this game? We have two right diagonal cards. We have two forward cards. We have a single card that can cover the left diagonal, which is the Mantis, a symmetrical card. Uh, so what are the two main axes I see in this set of cards? On the one hand, the Mantis will give this very unique angle, the left diagonal. Uh, so it might be what many players would call the strongest card. On the other hand, I also see that we have a Rooster and a Boar. Both cards have lateral structural glue. And that means that these cards will, uh, once again, allow for very uh, solid uh, mid-game structures. Um, so these are the two main uh, uh, points that I see in these two cards. So the fact that there are a few cards, more than one card that has lateral structural glue, it usually means that uh, playing a sound uh, positional mid game uh, will, uh, will be uh, a benefit for you. On the other hand, the Mantis with its unique uh, direction, the, the left diagonal might also bring uh, some advantages as long as you hold on to it. Again, as I said, holding on to a card blindly is uh, not a good strategy, but what you will see Zena Serzo doing constantly throughout this game is positioning himself in a way that the Mantis gives him uh, a unique uh, direction for attacking, and because of that he can constantly keep uh, his opponent, Knut the Great, on his toes. Now, let's see how this game was played. Uh, by looking at the diagonals, we see that we have uh, two right diagonals and two forward cards. So this type of development uh, is the most uh, natural uh, development. So this is what uh, Zena Zerzo uh, accounts for. And his first move is Ox uh, D1, D2. To which... Uh, Knut the Great replies with rabbit e5 d4. Boar e1 e2. Ox b5 b4.
Rabbit A1B2. Uh, Rooster D5C4. And now here, I want to pause for a second. The natural developing uh, move here, the natural developing continuation, would be for Zenacerzo to play his Mantis, Knut the Great to play his uh, Boar, and we would go to a perfectly uh, fine uh, asymmetrical opening. This would imply, um, though, giving control of the Mantis, which, uh, as we've seen, it's the only card controlling the, the left diagonal. So here, uh, there is a better move, uh, seeing that the Rooster is coming and that you'll be able to complete your development with the Rooster if you wait for one turn. Now, there are multiple ways to wait here. There's a passive waiting move, which is simply using your Ox to move sideways with a master, for example. But what Zena Zerzo finds here is a beautiful move, uh, which at this point I wouldn't even call it a waiting move because it's so aggressive and, uh, and so, um, so efficient. And the move that uh, Zena Zerzo found was using the ox to advance his pawn from E2 to E3. Now, this move does several things. On the one hand, it's the waiting move he needed to get the rooster to complete his development. On the other hand, this is the first moment in the game where Zanacerzo is exploiting the imbalance caused by him having the only uh, left diagonal card. By moving to uh, E3, he's using his left diagonal to attack, to attack the D4 pawn of Knut the Great. Not only that, but there's an even more dangerous threat here, which is if Knut the Great now completes his development with the boar, the danger is that this pawn is not being guarded by anyone anymore. So this pawn is now up for grabs. This makes it a, an extra dangerous attack, the fact that he's attacking from an uncovered angle, but also the fact that Knut cannot simply ignore the attack and finish his development. So Knut sees that as a, as a good player, he doesn't miss this kind of uh, tactics. He sees that and he, com he defends against this threat by using his boar to move his pawn to e4 and launch himself a counter attack on the e3 pawn of, um, of Zanazerzo. And now here, uh, again, there are two options. Uh, there's the simple developing option here with the rooster, because the mantis is guarding this pawn, but this would not be good enough. And why not? Because this would translate into the trade of these two pawns, which as you see, it's one of our stronger pawns by one of Knut the Great's weaker pawns, but it would also give the mantis away. It would also give now this uh, unique angle of attack to our opponent with no uh, no benefit, right? If, if we would be in this position. So here, Zanazerzo again finds a very strong move, which is to use the rooster to reposition his uh, e-pawn. And this move, it does more than it might originally look like. And why is that? Because um, it is inviting a trade, and now the trade is this, but there are two big advantages on this trade compared to the previous trade in E3. One is that you maintain control of the Mantis, and two is that because you keep control of the Mantis, your opponent will always have a hard time in this axis. So basically you just gobbled a column from the space of your opponent's board. It will make the E file very, very hard to access for Knut the Great, and therefore it will mean that Knut the Great is playing in a smaller board than you are. Um, so this trade that is invited by this uh, rooster E3 to D3 move is a very powerful trade um, for Zanazerzo uh, position. Uh, and indeed here, what we see is that 
uh, Knut the Great accepts the trade. He takes with the rabbit. And then Azerzo captures back with the boar. And here we are indeed in this position where Zenazerzo is playing on a 5x5 five five board and Knut the Great is playing on a 4x5 board. So with this trade, one file was almost completely removed from the board for uh, Knut the Great. Now here, um, Knut the Great plays the move um, Ox B4, B3. He plays this move. I believe that here there is a better move. Um, if you look at uh, Zanazerzo pawn structure, all of his pawns are very central. This pawn is one step away from completing his development towards the center. This pawn is cutting uh, one file out of uh, Knut the Great's uh, board, and this pawn is holding on the rest of uh, the center. On the other hand, Knut the Great's pawns are a bit uh, unbalanced. These two pawns are extremely good, even though they don't look on the left uh, diagonal. But this pawn, the pawn in a5, is completely out of the game. And because of that, I think his main priority in this position should be to try to develop the pawn um, with an a5, a4 move uh, using the ox, because that will give him more options to, in the near future, try to step into the position. Instead, by playing uh, b4, b3 um, with uh, the ox, what Knud is doing is he's trying to launch a counter-attack. He kind of gives up on the fact that he lost this exchange and he now tries to bring the aggression back to, um, to Zanacerzo. Um, but I do think that this is indeed uh, a weaker option than simply developing the pawn. Uh, the other uh, weakness that I see in this position that is not immediately apparent is if Knut the Great had access to a left diagonal, this move would actually be very good because it allows in one step to bring the A pawn back into the game. But because he has no access to a left diagonal, his move here will always have to be decomposed into two moves, a lateral and a forward, or vice versa. And that is easy to achieve in this position because we have two forward cards and we have two lateral cards. So this move would have been very good if there was a left diagonal available to him. But as we've seen, Zena Zerzo is uh, masterfully uh, starving Knut the Great from this left diagonal. So that's the reason why I think this move is slightly weaker than this move. But this is the move that was played. Let's see how the game continues. Here, there's not much to be done by Zanas Zerzo, so he simply wraps up his development. His three pawns are now very active, very strong, uh, looking at the, at, at the center. So there's not much more you can hope from your, from your pawn structure at this point of the game. And here is where I think that Knut the Great makes the first uh, small uh, inaccuracy. The move that Knut the Great played was uh, Rooster c5 to b4. This was the move he played. Now, why do I think that this is an inaccuracy? For a few reasons. First, you have a weaker centrum because you only have two pawns. Knut the Great has three pawns and the unique uh, diagonal. So this center will uh, very likely not uh, not be winning for Knut the Great. And adding his master to it basically means that he's creating a chance for his master to be uh, endangered. On the other hand, I understand his move here, and it's to protect the b3 pawn. The b3 pawn is being attacked twice, and it's only defended once, but by moving his master, he is apparently defending it. That's correct. That's a right assessment. But here, I think there is a more important uh, priority, and playing this master completely destroys it, which is the development of the a5 pawn. The a5 pawn is completely out of the game, and by moving his master to b4, now there's no move that will help developing 
uh, a5 anytime soon because going to b5 won't have a4 going to uh, won't have uh, b4 going to a4 won't have b4 it won't have b3 anytime soon so by moving his master here he's effect effectively smothering his a pawn while giving Zanazerzo a target to uh, attack the master as soon as he resolves the tension in the center. And by having this 3 to 2 pawn majority in the center, he will most likely resolve it in a, in a positive way. Um, so I believe this master move is not uh, ideal. At the point where, at the point where Knud the Great made this move, he had the boar and the rooster, which might bring ideas of this type of development to the apon. But of course, he cannot proceed with this development as long as he has this weakness here. So my suggestion here would have been to use the boar to trade away these pawns. He would force uh, Zanazerzo to uh, give away his uh, mantis as well. And he would now be free to start uh, bringing the A-pawn back in the position. Unfortunately, this is not what uh, Knud the Great played. He just played his master to b4. And let's see how Zenazerzo now replies to that. The obvious reply here would be to go and start trading pawns. Since you have a stronger center, your master is one step away from starting to join this center fight as well. Um, but I believe that here Zanazerzo once again uh, masterfully found the best move. A uh, very creative move, a very powerful move, but a very scary move uh, at the same time. He uses his ox to move his c2 pawn to c3. Now why is this a scary move? It's a scary move because if you look at it without checking the cards, you see that there are uh, three pieces of, uh, of the blue player eyeing the c3 square and only two red pawns defending the c3 square. And that's something you usually avoid. Uh, but indeed, when you look at the cards and you realize that you are the only one uh, holding the left diagonal, it means that this master is not really a defender of c3. So, Indeed, you are in a two, in a two for two uh, position. But the fact is that the master is in b4, and even though it's not an active defender, it is directly being attacked by this move, and that's what makes this move so strong. The fact that you can claim the center, even though there is an apparent majority of uh, the blue player eyeing the center, and claim the center while attacking the master, uh, it's. It's very hard to get a better move than this at this stage of the game. And here, Knud the Great uh, simply has to react because his master is under uh, attack. He could fall back with the master, but I don't really see a good, uh, a good outcome uh, there. So what he plays is uh, he takes with the boar from the B pawn to the C pawn. Here, Zanazerzo takes with the rooster, again checking the master, and Knuth once again captures with the ox. And Zanazerzo finishes it with the boar. So this is the position after the, the dust settles, after all these uh, trades were uh, executed. And indeed we see that this is uh, already a very uh, strong position for Zanazerzo. Uh, Knut the Great is in trouble here. His master is being checked, Zanazerzo has full and disputed control of the c3 pawn, and Knut the Great's a pawn well, might as well not be there, because it's completely out of the game. So this is a position that is extremely solid for Zanazerzo, and uh, in a few moves he will be able to translate this into a victory.
Knud uses the master to move from b4 back to c5 with the rabbit. And here, Zenes Zerzo just has to push towards the center, and that's what he does to consolidate all the extra space that he managed to, to gain. Um, Knut the Great moves with the boar, c5, d5. Zene Zerzo keeps pushing, c2, d3. And as you can see, this is a very uh, hard position to fight back for, uh, for Knut the Great. His pawn is still completely out of the game. There is no immediate plan to bring it into the game. Uh, Zene Zerzo uh, controls the center undisputedly, and he can now start pushing uh, and restricting the, the space uh, more and more for, for Knut the Great. So this is indeed what we will, uh, what we will see. Uh, rooster a5 b5, an attempt to bring finally the a pawn for the first time into the game, but it's too little too late. Um, boar c3 c4, checking the master, attacking the pawn, really restricting the, the space. Ox d5 c5. And here there's really no escape anymore for um, for uh, Knut the Great. Zena Zerzo simply makes a, a kind of a passing move. And at this point, Knut the Great throws in the towel. He just simply captures the pawn with the boar try to cut his losses by capturing one final pawn, and here Zena Zerzo simply finishes the game with uh, an ox capture. So this was my analysis of the round one match between Zena Zerzo and uh, Knut the Great. Um, I found this, as I said, a very interesting game. Um, it's a masterclass on how to hold on to a card in the correct way. Uh, when you think you have the best card uh, and you hold on to it in a passive way. Uh, so by playing weaker moves to avoid playing that card, you're usually doing yourself a great uh, disservice. But when you play as tightly as uh, Zena Zerzo did in this game, you can really transform that unique uh, angle of attack that that special card gives you into uh, a rolling uh, advantage. And this is exactly what you've seen uh, Zena Zerzo do in this game from the opening all the way until the end game, from his first attack with the uh, e3 pawn um, to his uh, attack on the master when the master um, moved just a little bit too exposed uh, in b4. Um, what Zena Zerzo played in this game was uh, was truly a, a brilliant, a brilliant match. Uh, very, very efficient use of the unique angle of attack, and indeed when you can play this kind of clean uh, game and use your uh, unique card uh, to build this rolling advantage, oh, by all means, uh, hold on to it. Uh, what you will see is that indeed in most matches this is not possible. Um, it's uh, holding on to the best card ends up being a disadvantage if you cannot uh, build this constant uh, attacking uh, positional game. But what uh, Zena Zerzo did in this game is truly remarkable. Uh, Knut the Great also played a, an incredible game. I mean, apart from that small imprecision uh, with moving his master forward, I think he played nearly flawlessly. Uh, he saw all the traps very well, reacted uh, well to them. Uh, but indeed, when you play as accurately as uh, Zena Zerzo did in this game, uh, there's not much you can do. Uh, you can only congratulate your opponent and uh, yeah, and, and enjoy how beautifully he, he played this match. So thanks a lot for uh, uh, watching this uh, analysis. Um, I don't think I will cover any more games from round one. 
um, but soon round two will be finished as well. So uh, expect my coverage of uh, round two uh, in the next few days. Thanks for joining.